So here we are with a massive uh, LED spotlight that I am using to get the smallest freaking chip in the world. Well, probably not in the world, but in my eyeballs. I don't know. Anyway, the chip looks like this on the tip of my finger. It has some missing legs. So I got some new ones and uh, put them on there. I also did some ghetto fab work. And I blinged out the 3640. Don't be all mad at my zip ties. But I zip tied around the edge of the thing and just zip tied this thin fan on. It's it's classic. That's that's factory. And then we uh, did some old, uh, not old, but new uh, Raspberry Pi heat sinks. Ten of those bad boys on all the gals, so that they can have a party and that'll keep them whew, nice and cool. When I put all the little fan direction little slot thing sucking this way so if by chance that power supply fan pulls some air across it I'll like cool these down a little bit so she works fine tested that worked good fan is uh, all right I already put the chip that you can't see in because of this gargantuan light right here but I'll point her out to you she's got a little strawberry wire on it because I was unable to see and one of the traces was broke so if this is like a weird glare I'm sorry all right so I use the Mega PCB Explorer great uh, great thing it's a little bit getting used to you gotta what I find to do is put the board to black you can do that in your settings up here in the corner and the opacity and all that stuff and what I do is I zoom in about 200 percent and I highlight something that is nothing usually like a ground peg because the blue is the hardest color to see and then you can click on like something else and it will you know highlight the trace kind of like what sprint pcb explorer does for my other views ghetto fab job here it's uh, not two wires it kind of goes a little boop and there's one on this side too so from here to here there's a jumper and then this kind of goes kind of i was trying to get it over but i couldn't get my fat pickle fingers in here because they're a little bit oversized when you're trying to work on a micro wire and even the pliers are just a gargantuan so when you're holding a chip that I've already lost the whole sleeve that I bought um, you know, I'll find them one day so I put this thing on that beep beep and uh, went over all the and got her got her sorted again I gotta clean some flux off but I don't really care for the moment because no one is gonna see her once I get the the purdy board in here it's gonna be all like this and you ain't gonna see that maybe you know maybe you will but you won't because it'll be in my case in my basement and nope look at that you can't even tell she's all factory that slot is uh just in the right spot where you cannot solder at all i kind of tickled the the board a little bit with some you know just gave her a touch while i was uh trying to get my fat fingers in there to you know actually do some work and I kept burning it so she's got some battle scores but this is serial number 439 oh and then remember when I told you I needed a crystal so I bought some crystals for the board right I'm like all excited I got my crystals and they're 40 megahertz that's just awesome so I ordered 50s got some 40s I don't want a 20 megahertz Amiga, so it's if you give it the old, the old Tanya Harding, you can, you can get it going. Looking for power light, looking for hard drive light. We got the keyboard hooked up. We got the SCART dude. We are set. Hit it. Boom. 25.6, 18,548 drive stones, 19.36 MIPS, and 4.78 mega flops problem I had before we have no boards right now uh, memory we have 8 megs 32 bit fast 2 mega chip was my drives when I went to HD 0 and hit speed nothing would happen triple finger didn't work 1.77 so I can hit SCSI now and I can see the fireball drive so my problem before was when I would reboot it my triple finger didn't work before uh, now we reboot Instant boot, look at that. Look how fast this boots, bam, we're up. For now, I'm gonna put the boards in real quick before we go put this in the case. I don't wanna put all those cards back in. I'm not gonna use the PAR or the Micropolis or anything like that. I'm First off is the time-based corrector for, this also gets the next card 
Oh, which is the PAR and it plugs in SCSI right here. It does have another IDE header right here that I have to hook up. It's actually uh, resting on its self. So now we're gonna plug this in to the Micropolis here things. Let's see what the hell happens. Got a light on the PAR. Ooh, that Micropolis sounds nasty. Uh, besides Magic Workbench, she's factory. So we're gonna go into work here. And we're going to load the Studio 16 is for the card, but we're going to load the PAR here and load the PAR test. All right, it found the board. PAR, let's see what this thing actually has. Ooh, come on, baby, find your projects. Find the Micropolis. It's chunking. All right, so we have Naked, Silver, and Star Trek. Let's just play naked. <laughs> I don't have a monitor hooked up. How am I going to see this? Time base corrector 4. I don't have my uh, monitor hooked up. So I will need the monitor. I just want to see. It had these demos. Prime Star demo. Innovatronics. My air conditioner's on. Nineteen ninety five General Instrument Corporation using Scala space to continue. Okay. Don't know what's on it. It's doing something. Is that it? Really? That was it. Or is it just loading and just butt crack slow? Or it's on the display monitors that I can't see. Let's plug the sound rise in. So this is everything she came with. Let's go Studio 16. This is for the sound card. This handler requires at least 64K RAM chips. Uh, 8 megs of fast, 1.6 megs of chip. Alright, so that one works. I don't know what QVC L, QVC right. Let's highlight QVC. Now, this is really a soft contained unit. You're able to operate one CD, compact disc that's right here. You can either use the standard size, you can use the, the smaller disc. You go ahead and you just lay the disc in, close it up. For QVC. And then you've got your play button, your skip functions, which are really kind of like a fast forward and rewind for a cassette deck, but only this is CD. Ooh. And then you've got your LCD display up here to tell you which track you're on. Now, the way you operate this on a car stereo is to install it, you go ahead and set it on the seat, and you have this weird looking little gizmo. Okay. Now remember, for those of you that don't know, uh, Commodore, the building that Commodore was in, in uh, Westchester, was purchased later on by QVC, was this, and I bought this around the Philadelphia area. It's not, you know, too far from Westchester, but you never know. Let's play this one. What is this? Pretty long sample. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I gotta hear it. I don't know what this is. Ed and I drove down to the docks where Nordberg had been found floating face down. Okay. Naked gun. That's what that is. All right. So, naked gun left, naked gun right. Let's see if the right side will play. Ed and I drove down to the docks where Nordberg had been found floating face down in the water. In a case where there are no leads, you have to start... Okay, so that's Naked Gun. Silver left, silver right. Star Trek, what is this? Where's that damn torpedo? Okay, so we got some stats. That's it. Star Trek samples. So the QVC, the Naked Gun, and Star Trek. Looks like, sounds like Captain Kirk launching a torpedo. Might be Ratha Khan. That's the Studio 16, at least the sound card works, the 80-1202. That's cool. We'll use it. It is uh, 44 kilohertz. Let's see. You know what? We're just going to play something with Directory Opus. I want to hear if a music mod sounds better. Mix 5 again. Whoa, it's louder.
I only have one cable hooked up, so it's coming out of the sound car. Yeah, so right now that's how she came. 6840 Amiga 4000, 8 megs of RAM, uh, 8202. Uh, PAR and a time-based corrector for for doing whatever. I don't know. There might be some footage with the uh, PAR. Yeah, I don't have any outputs on my monitor, so I can't see. Not what I'm going to use it for. But it's neat to see that it worked. That is a very warm drive. This one, cool as a cucumber. This sucker, woo! It gets it's pretty warm. So yeah, Micropolis 2210A. All right, so here's the case. I haven't touched it since I got it. I just stripped it. It's got some. All right, so apparently uh, you need memory cards for these things. All right, so a slight update. I went to eat, and then I was gonna do the case thing. And like every other 4,000 in the world that I have ever popped the front off of, there's usually a little square hole right here that you can uh, route your uh, your disc lights through. But since this is serial number 439, it doesn't have that. I guess that was put in after everybody's like, hey. Where do you put the damn cables at? All right, so that was eventless. I just pushed them in, the wires are right here. Okay, I took a couple minutes and put the three one, three one ROMs in. So now I'm working my 3.1 on 3.1 ROM. It even says it in the corner. So I have to put this back together. All right, a little bit further along, stuck an uh, IDE DVD drive in it. All right, so this is what I came up with. Got that card sitting on a piece of paper on top of the original hard drive for now. Then it goes to the DVD drive and then underneath. I'm not doing the sound card or anything yet. We're just going to make sure it works. Lights come on. Keyboard. Drive. CD drive. And then we're going to put 3.9 on it. So, yes, I agree. Great. I need a 3.9 because i got to make myself a boot disc. So, here we go. I'm just going to wipe all this. I don't care. Ooh. All right, but first, I need to make myself a disc. Great emergency disc. Okay, your emergency disc is now ready for use. Great. Okay, continuing on with the OS 3.9 install. So this is ugly because it's in ugly mode. So we're back with Project 4000. I just want to take the cover off and test these chips. Reseat. These were tested. One. Two. I have one more to, I have two more to do, so I'm going to do this again. What we're going to do is we're just going to do memory and I need to just do this RAM. Cool. Okay. So that's that RAM. All right, so as a final test, I'm going to put in the third and final that I can fit right now until my replacement sockets arrive. I got more ones that are more sitting straight up because I can't stand how they lay back so far. 
I know it's because of the card clearance, but I don't have any cards in here and don't care. So, this should be 12 megs of RAM. 12 megs, 13, 14. Still gotta do the Boeing bags. Hey, there's my hot water heater. So anyway, that is the RAM upgrade. Oop, geez, a whiz. I still have to put my final SIM uh, socket on so I can put this one in. Like I said, they're a little bit not so high of a pitch. I do also have to put the battery for the real-time clock back on. I ordered 10 of these from various dealers and we'll see who comes in first. So that is about it right now. We are pretty much complete. We have a completely recapped and repaired Amiga 4040 with maximum, will be maximum RAM, CD-ROM, uh, 3640, OS 3.9, on a 31 kilohertz signal with the DB23 to 15 VGA adapter. And we're gonna pimp this out some more. We're gonna do like a Picasso or ZZ9000. I don't know yet. So that's the game plan. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.